Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Travis, and today we are lane sharking with Benji Turley from Bashir's Tractor. And uh, Benji, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Glad and, to be uh, here. Making the trip over here yeah. and entertaining our little podcast area. Uh, so I would like to start off, just let you kind of introduce yourself and okay. tell everybody who you are, why yeah. you're here, and how we know each other. Okay. I'm Benji Turley. I work for uh, Bashir's Tractor and Equipment in Oxford, Alabama. Uh, I've been in the tractor business pretty much my whole life with my family. Uh, sales, marketing, just, you know, general dealership stuff. Really got involved with, the, you know, the Lane Shark stuff. We've You know, the last two years really liked Travis's product. Been really excited about it. You know, we've really pushed it hard on our website and our dealership because it's something our customers can use and the utility of it has been something we've really liked and really wanted to come down and see things, you know, meet you guys in person. I talk to JC all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and wanted to put a face, you know, with the names and the guys I'm talking to and see things, how things are going. And I watched the last lane shark and I got excited about the boat too. <laughs> I wanted to come see the boat. So. Yeah, it's down there. <laughs> Still haven't touched it in the last <laughs> six months, but it's down there. Need to get it finished. I'm going to try to take it home soon Yeah, and uh, hopefully work on it on the weekends. I want to ride in it when you get it done. Man, I, it's it's fun. <laughs> it, it looks fun. It's, it's not like – it's so strange because if you let off the gas, it's going wherever it wants <laughs> to go. Just because there's no control. In it. Right. because it's there's so no short. Right. Well, it's because there's no rudder like oh, on a regular boat. Okay, you know, okay. you have the tail of the – Oh, yeah, uh, the things, the jet mm -hmm. things. Yeah, I got you. And so you, you can be going full speed and turn just a little bit and let off, and you are going sideways – Doing a 180, it's it it has surprised well, you. My wife will tell you I can't drive a boat, a pontoon, anything. I'm I'm terrible. <laughs> I can't stop them, put it up to a pier. I can unload it, put it on a trailer. Well, you can ride. So I would be a rider. Yeah. yeah, I don't need to be a driver. It's... Well, we we can definitely do that. So <laughs> maybe this summer I can get it closer okay. to being done. Okay. We've only taken it out like twice because it's not legal yet. Yeah. Okay. So okay. We got to get the uh get all the wiring done and get yeah. everything done with that. But but anyway, um. So, yeah, so you've been working, it's a family business. You've mm -hmm. been working there since you were 14? I mean, you know, I've been hanging around since I was 12. Okay. I guess I actually started doing physical labor and getting paid for it when I was about 14. You know, just, hey, wash this, hey, put this together, hey, load this up on a trailer. Right. So you really come up from the from the ground yeah, floor. And, you know, we had tractors when I was growing up. We weren't farmers. Mm -hmm. We had property. My, my grandfather had about 40 acres. He kept bush hawed and hay cut on and you know my stepdad had cows so you know he had a tractor he used it mainly to feed the cows with and I was around tractors knew a good bit about them you know we weren't row cropping or growing anything but I've pretty much since the day I could walk been on a track there's a video somewhere uh, my, my mom's got my grandmother had it, me on a lawnmower when I was probably one or two with my granddad and he's letting me drive it yeah. you know and it's been that way ever since. Like every little boy, everybody wants to get on a tractor. Oh you know, yeah, so. yeah. We we had my stepdad had an old Ford tractor when mm -hmm. I was little because you know we didn't have a farm either. We yeah. but food plots and all that because we've yeah. always hunted. And uh, he bought, he got rid of that. It was it didn't even have power steering. It didn't have a loader. I mean it was it was not make fun your to arms drive. strong. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he bought a uh, a new Holland, I probably twelve or so. Mm -hmm. And he got a two-wheel drive New Holland without a loader. And I, I remember being that young. I'm like, you got to get a loader on it and a four-wheel drive. And he's like, oh, I don't need that. I don't need that. We had that tractor for about three years. And I was like, I need a loader. And a I can't tell you how many times I heard that over yep. the years, selling tractors. You know, and it was, you know, guys that had tractors in the 60s and 70s, you know, they didn't need it. It wasn't, it wasn't right. a thing. Everybody didn't have one. The ones that were out there were not reliable. You know, in about the mid '90s, they started making good loaders with fast response times. Like the first loaders that come out were so slow. Like you'd pick something up, and it was just like, mm. uh, you know. And then mid '90s, early 2000s, that stuff just got faster and more reliable. And you had to have four wheel drive because you couldn't back up. Right. If you put a load in your loader, and you tried to back up, you weren't going anywhere. You know, I if did. you had to back up a hill or you were in some mud. <laughs> So then that's when everybody said, hey, you got to have four-wheel drive yep. and a loader. And just probably the last 15 years, about 2009, 2010, two-wheel drives just died mm -hmm. completely. You know? Yeah, I know. I'm always – because our tractor stays here at the office most of the time. And we have a forklift now, but 
for the longest time, I just had my tractor, and mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've gone pick something up and start driving, and I'm just sitting there like, what in the world? <laughs> not in oh yeah, drive. I need to like in four wheel drive. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> digging holes in the back because it's just mm-hmm. barely touching. It'll just sit and spin. Yep. Yeah, but man, I I've had my Kubota for 2018. So math and math, what's that? Six years. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought it specifically because of lane shark like i had to was using it to test because mm-hmm. i hadn't used my stepdad's tractor and he has a new holland mm-hmm. and man i can't like i hate that tractor mm-hmm. you let off the clutch it's not it's not an easy clutch so you let off and it always wants to jump so, yeah. the loaders he loves the tractor but i can't stand it and so when i got my Kubota, i got the l6060 so you got uh, hydrostatic yeah that's yeah. and i got the biggest Kubota I could get that was hydrostatic. Mm-hmm. Because, and you got the HST Plus, mm-hmm. which is even better on that one. So, so cause like when I'm cutting, I want to be able to just in and out, in mm-hmm. and out, and you know, shifting. And I have those shuttle shifts now, but it's still just not not, it's as, not convenient. as fast now. But yeah, I bought that thing and man, it's I know it's probably not the nicest tractor in the world, but it is a nice tractor. To, to me, the L sixty sixty is about the nicest thing you can really? buy. No joke. Yeah. I mean well, like I made a good choice then. The thing we were talking about before we got on here is about time, you know, saving. Yep. That tractor, the hydrostatic part of it, the, high, the horsepower of it, you can do things so much faster than the guy that's pushing in the clutch or yep. even the guy that's stopping and changing, you know, yep. here. You just save yourself. If you're going to do eight hours of work, you're going to save yourself an hour every time you do eight hours of work. Yeah. And, you know, over a year, so you save yourself up. a day, yep. you know. And you say, think of how many days you save yourself just with the lane shark. Just that's right. With the lane shark, really, yeah. Like, I mean, hey, instead of me spraying Roundup or using a weed eater or a bush axe or whatever I was doing before or something dangerous driving a tractor somewhere I shouldn't be, right? You take a lane shark, knock it out. You know, that's something I just thought of. Pole recently. saw too, cutting stuff over. I mean, I've seen people just completely replace that stuff. Right. But as far as you're talking about spraying, like I haven't really ever thought about that. And about oh, yeah. s- maybe six months ago, I finally made that connection. It's like, you know, a lane shark is cutting stuff. You don't have to spray you all those chemicals. That's right. That's dangerous chemicals, Take a chance of yeah. messing yourself up. Mm-hmm. And just better for the environment. Mm-hmm. And that's with the whole green thing that's going on nowadays. Like you, you, all that's at the forefront of your mind. Yeah. So well, you see all these roundup <laughs> lawsuits. lawsuits on TV every time you turn the TV <laughs> yeah. on. And it scares me to use that stuff because I'm like... You know, it makes sense. This stuff's just killing anything it touches dead. Oh, yeah. You know, you probably shouldn't be breathing it in. Yeah, you know? get it on your skin. I mean. Well, like I was telling you, though, I, I had the guy, sold him, guy I went to school with, I sold him a 3560 with mm-hmm. an LS3, and he his son's going to use the tractor. He's doing land maintenance for people. He brought it over and cut my fence lines for me. Well, up until then, I'd always sprayed. Mm-hmm. And it looks terrible when you spray because you got that dead, dead yep. yellow. Well, he cut it with the lane shark. Looked like a golf course when he got done, right. you know, compared to spraying and just being dead stuff out there. So I'm like, when it, when it gets time again, I'm going to ask him to come over, cut it again for me. Because I don't want to take a new one home and use it. You know, that would be. So your tractor is a. I've got a BX2680. BX2680. Yep. So, I don't have, a, I don't have, I've had about five acres. Right. At my place. And I'll put a little garden in. And I'll keep the grass cut. And I'll do a little bush hogging. So what you're saying is that uh, we need to build you one for a small for my tractor. BX, I'll okay. get one. Yeah, then I'll get me one. All right. Yeah. So that's something I, I mentioned earlier. We I'm playing around with the idea. We're gonna do a try to do some little market research. We're gonna do a poll and stuff on Facebook and talk to the people because we have a lot of people that that message us about it and their tractor is just too small. Mm-hmm. And so I'm gonna I'm not make any promises. It's gonna happen anytime soon. We got so much other stuff, but. Try to build a smaller unit that either that, that satisfies what these guys need. We're gonna have to sacrifice either the home position or offset. So I'm thinking, I think you mentioned that yeah. the offset is gonna be what you personally would would benefit from. So we can probably scale some stuff down and get it light enough for those BX tractors and maybe the one series John Deere, but definitely mm-hmm. the two series and um, try to help those people. But I. I just don't have a small tractor like that, so I haven't haven't quite figured out exactly what they need. So talking to you has definitely helped today, and I think we can probably build something smaller and lighter that's safe on those tractors. But like I say, it'll just have to sacrifice it, the home position. Yeah, because all that that swing arm and stuff so much right, weight. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, I'm even gonna, if it does less, you can still do more than you can do now. Right, without it. Without right. it, yeah, right. exactly. See, so, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
try to start working that, kicking that around in my in my brain. We got to get the hammerhead released, then get the hammerhead five for the skid steers released. Mm -hmm. That'll be probably next year. So if I can get get my manufacturing running smooth, I might be able to get it done a little quicker. Yep. But that's uh that's what I'm I'm so excited about our manufacturing capacity that we're getting ready to go. It looks good. It's it's gonna be badass. I really like the floor. I'm serious. That little green. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I've spent a lot of time trying to trying to coordinate that place. Like everybody kind of a lot of people kind of laugh at it, and I'm like, you know, it it may seem trivial, but when I want when people walk in there. Mm -hmm. Especially people that work there. When they walk in, I want them to go. I'm proud to work here because this place. Yeah. It well, you looks spend more nice. time at work than you do at home. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. You do. I mean, that's something I've you know I've talked with the guys I work with a lot. You know, <clears throat> you want to walk in there and be proud of that place. You know, yep. and you want to walk in there every day and say, "Man, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad this is happening." And you know, I I spend more time with the guys I work with than I get to spend with my family. You know, spending. 45, 50 hours a week with those guys. You know, yeah. like, if I get to spend much time with my family, I'm lucky. You right. Know? And it's definitely not weekly because. Yeah, man, that is that is one thing I've been very fortunate with this. Like, I have such a great group of people that work with me now. That's important. That I don't do it very often, but I could just disappear mm -hmm. and stay home, hang out. They could do it. Oh, yeah, they, they, they could run it. Like, I, I've, I've been very fortunate to find these types of people that they they love working here. They take ownership of it. But, like, my biggest thing, my philosophy is I like to give my people everything they need and almost everything they want to be able to be successful. Mm -hmm. So if they fail, it's not due to me not giving them what they need. Mm -hmm. And so, like, almost – I don't – I don't think I do do it. Some days I probably get out of here in a hurry, but I try to go in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, go and just ask everybody individually, like, hey, do you need anything from me? Is there anything I can help you with? And most of the time it's no because they're they're very self sufficient. Mm -hmm. So that's it's been wonderful because like, you know, there's days where I just want to go home and hang out with my boys. Yeah. And my wife and like we just don't have to worry about nothing. So mm -hmm. it is nice being able to to spend time with your family like that. When so. I know the kids at that age too, you get a lot of runny noses and oh sick days and it's uh, man that that age. You, they're not even in school yet. They catch they everything. Get sick every day. They catch everything and you got you know. I don't understand You're where it comes to the, from. To the pediatrician, and I mean, I, I man, know, man, it's uh, two weeks ago. My youngest son uh, woke up in the middle of the night, and he could barely breathe. Mm -hmm. And we ended up taking him to the hospital. He had to stay overnight, mm, and dang. they they don't even they're like, oh, maybe like bronchitis or they they tested him, couldn't figure out what it was, but <sighs> he uh, they put him on oxygen for a couple hours, and then stayed overnight, and was home the next day. But like that whole day, I was home with my other son. Mm -hmm. Next morning, and um, I luckily my mom was around, but it's it's wild. And I'm like I say, I harp on this, but I'm very fortunate to have the people mm -hmm. that that work here that can take care of things without me. So that's that's wonderful. Um, I feel very blessed, and it's a lot. Uh, also, very thankful to people like you because you know you guys are pushing our product, which yeah. allows us to be successful. So um, you guys have hit the ground running, and. That's one thing. So what what do you think sets you guys apart in being able to to sell so much that you guys do? Like you like say you've hit you've been with us two years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys are already I think Opalaka top five may have dealers. been with you a little bit longer than that. Okay. You know, we started, you know, getting them from them. We were selling a few. And then, you know, we got everything worked out and we were getting them ourselves. And you know, the thing with us, and we've always, you know, going back to how when my grandfather started it, we do something that other people don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Try to stay ahead. You know, we, we don't mind changing. I think that's right. the thing you see people run into. They get stagnant or they get comfortable, and they don't want to change what they do because they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing okay. We're, we're, we're doing this X amount, this X amount. We're doing okay. I don't want to change that. You know, that's that's too big of a risk. Right. And I think we don't mind taking a little bit of risk, you know, trying newer things, you know. <clears throat> you know, social media has changed the world, not just our business, but you know, trying to stay on top of all that stuff, you know, and ahead of the game. And so you you deal a lot with the social media, right? I do, for your yeah. company. Yeah. Okay. I, I deal a lot with the, the social media marketing. Mm-hmm. 
I don't do a lot of posting anymore. I did a lot of that before 2020. We mm -hmm. did a lot of separate ads. You know, we did we posted a lot of things, and it's just more now where we're we're trying to post reels. But you know, you know that's where everybody's all the attention's going. All the short. attention's going to short. 15, 30 second videos. Yeah, yeah. Hook them do, in the first second. <laughs> I do a lot less of just, hey, look at this kind of stuff, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, we um that's like our whole I as much as I hate Facebook now, like mm -hmm. our whole company was essentially built on mm -hmm. Facebook. Like we let's see. I don't remember when my first post was, but my first sale was January 30th or 31st of 2017. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We posted that. It's a picture of uh, a guy named Gordon Howell, good friend of my stepdad's, and my stepdad's standing there. I uh, saw it. Yep. yep. So that was our very first sale. Sold that one, built two more, or no, built three, because that, that, that picture just popped up in my memories just two days ago. Mm -hmm. My first three, that we, we shipped those out. But we built those, posted it's everything. Like people kind of got to see from the ground up on Facebook with us because, like, it was the very first one, the first few, and then over. And then um, Kyler, uh, an old friend of mine who ended up working here for a long time, but he he came to me and was like, I want to do a video for you guys. And so he did the very first, like, real video. Mm -hmm. And, man, it just took off like Love wildfire. Mm -hmm. And so Facebook is just awesome. And, you know, we would – I could just make random posts. And Zuckerberg I would get, change the algorithm in man, Mississippi. I know. <laughs> I think I think it all happened because Trump won the election. It really is. I mean, the, the election <laughs> interference stuff, I think, had a lot to do with yeah, all Yeah, they that clamped changing. down on all But that. here's what I run into now. I get so many bots mm -hmm. and fake accounts sending me messages that we never got before the last, seriously, last 24 months. Never got. The, every message I got, you know, three, four, or five years ago was legit somebody looking at something, wanting to know a price, wanting right. to ask a question. Hey, can I get finance? Hey, can I buy this? And now it's one out of 50 that are legit human being mm -hmm. wanting something on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I get, like, because Instagram and Facebook to me are pretty much the same thing. Yeah. We get every day no less than three, like, X-rated uh, <laughs> messages and requests. Yeah. And, like, how, how do they not... They they can if you say if you say the c word mm -hmm. they'll they'll kick you off mm -hmm. but somehow people can post naked pictures yeah. and all these links and they they can't stop that like are you are you that's what, yeah, serious that's what, yeah that's, that's and and it's there's no way to stop it no yeah. like you I can't filter so it's every day I have to go in there and block people AI and bots. AI is the reason they can't stop it you know they but, gotta, but AI can fight the AI yeah, they're gonna battle like, it it's like so we're gonna have Terminator that's what's gonna that's happen what, yeah. I mean, I just wish it would hurry up and happen. Uh, yeah. Just let's just get, get it over with. with. Stop yeah. worrying about it. The yeah. anticipation part's the worst of it. Sarah Connor needs to come on. <laughs> mm hmm Oh. <laughs> How about that? So hey, what you were talking about earlier about the BXs. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that for a second. Okay. I might need to do a little more research because I know this was true five years ago. And I don't know how much of your market has gotten to that part of the country yet, but the northeast Maine, Vermont, uh, you know, upstate New York, BX tractors, that's the number one thing up there. Really? Because they put snow plows on them. Huh. And so it's like the the big the smallest tractor they can put snow plows yeah, on? And I think that market would really do well because lane sharks do well. I've seen them in the snowy areas mm -hmm. cutting stuff. Yeah, it's something people time don't think year. about, like when the leaves are down and it's cold. That's the time to cut. Yeah, you can see the limbs yes. way better, and mm -hmm. it's brittle, so it cuts way easier. Mm -hmm. Just snaps off. That's one thing we've we've always wanted to get, and we got uh, saw him with Sandy that like he's done some some good videos up in the snow, and mm -hmm. it's helping us. Like we've gotten yeah, I've, a little I've bit of traction of those, yeah. because of that. Because I, I guess people, you know, down here we think of wintertime as that's hunting season. You your ass yeah. is not in the woods with a tractor. You better have it cut in August and September. Right, when you're planting your rye. And so you know. we haven't thought about it as hard because up north, you know, people have the snowmobile trail, so they're out there with machines in the wintertime anyway. Yep. So it's not disturbing the deer hunting like it is around here. Because, well, if you if you were to put a tractor in the woods in hunting season and around my stepdad, yeah. he would have shot you. <laughs> Like shot he right through the block. Oh, dude, he mm -hmm. he wouldn't even when I was little. He wouldn't even let me go bow hunting at our club because it might disturb the deer. Mm -hmm. And but everybody's like, got but UTVs, I'm going deer hunting. Though. 
Do what? Everybody's got their UTVs are riding around. You know, a oh, man. He he got an electric golf cart. Okay, so he's quiet. He, par- he's still- he parks five million miles away from the stand. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's made, it, he's, he made me a better hunter when I was younger, which I don't hunt near as much anymore. But yeah. you're going to hunt the wind. Mm-hmm. You're going to be quiet. Yeah. And you're not going to shoot anything unless you're going to mount it. Yeah. And he's, I mean, he's dead serious about it. And so he, but now he's, I don't even remember the last time he's killed a deer because he goes up there and just films them. Yeah. Which that's what makes him happy, and I'm happy for him. But I'm like, won't you go kill something? Like, you pay all this money. You he don't see, see anything he wants to mount. Oh, he... He's just so picky. He's killed a lot of good deer, yeah. so he's a lot pickier than I am, which is probably why he doesn't let me come hunting with him. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, I when I was younger, I used to hunt a lot, and when I moved away to South Carolina, I stopped hunting, and now I'm so busy all the time. I don't mm-hmm. even ever hunt. It's just mostly it's work or it's home. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping whenever my boys get a little bit older, we can start getting you'll, back in you'll, the woods. You'll take, you'll take them. You'll want to teach them, yeah. I'm fired up about that. My dad, he'll be – He'll be so happy once he can get him out on the boat and go mm-hmm. fishing because my dad loves to fish, so that'll be fun. But yeah, as far as back up to the north, we're we're starting to break into that area yeah. a good little bit now, mm-hmm. and um, we've got Messics up there, which we've yeah, yeah. we've you know we it's funny with Messics, you know I I got hooked up with um, Neil back before our. Our yellow copy came out, and we had set Neil up, and he and I talked, and I sent him a lane shark, and his purchasing manager had just started buying the yellow one. Okay. And so we sent him one, and then the yellow people came in. And so we we lost Messix for a while, and we finally got the the yellow ones gone. Yours um, is just a lot better quality. I mean, it's a fact. I looked at both of them, you know, just like, no. Mm-hmm. You know, just... It, it was one of those it's things not, where it's not as finished of a product. And, you know, when you're selling Kubotas, you know, I tell people all the time, they say, well, this, this is good. I say, like, hey, we're not going to sell if it's not as good as a tractor because we don't we don't want to work on it. Right. We don't want you having to work on it because if you're having to work on it, you're mad and you're calling us. Yep. We want it to be something quality, you know. Yeah, and, we, and that's the thing. So throughout the years, we've had quality issues, mm-hmm. like with any company Everybody that's new is, and yeah. growing, you know, but we – I am constantly trying to improve on it and mm-hmm. fix it. And, uh, you know, these these other people, basically, they, they built attachments and they saw how well we took off and they basically just said, well, shit, we'll just, we'll just copy it and then mm-hmm. we'll, we'll take over the market. But they didn't have the, all the experience of like why this thing happens or why mm-hmm. we have it this way. And so w- luckily I had it pat, I had my patent in place, but, so I was able to get that handled. But from day one, we had some customers that sold their other line. And so they would just basically force them to buy one of their cutters. And so they'd have ours side by side. And like basically from day one, our, our dealers were like, I, I don't even want to sell this crap. No, no, it's not even close. And so that that has, you know, that's always been nice to know that we do stand apart with quality. Mm-hmm. And if we do have a quality issue, we take care of it. And that's, you know, we've got now the LS4, which we've taken all the years of the LS2 stuff that we found that was, was problematic, and we've tried to get get rid of that. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing, in my opinion, is the rubber skirt in the back because people would be, you know, if they're cutting on the ground, especially in the offset, you know, catch a stump and it would bend something. And it's like I, I always think, like, I can, make the, I can make the cutter stronger where it doesn't bend or nothing, but then it's going to break something on the tractor. Mm-hmm. And so trying to work around that has been my – my goal and um and now like with everybody that's wanting to cut and not get out of the tractor about to solve that problem hopefully in about two more months we'll have that hammerhead on on the market you know i think it's more and what i've seen safety people feel safer with it moving itself than getting out moving it themselves right. yeah, yeah that, you get you get people sense. i've got people that are older you know Everybody's buying a quick hitch for the three point hitch now. You know, they, they want it easier to hook stuff up. Mm-hmm. They want it easier. You know, they don't want to have the threat of smashing a finger or, you know, dropping something on their foot. And, yeah. you know, the hydraulic side of it's going to be hey, this is safe. This is easy. I don't have to manhandle anything. Right. You know, I, it's there's no manual labor in it for me. You just hook it up. My wife can jump out here on it if she wants to and use it, and I'm not scared about her doing it. Right. You know? 
Yeah, it's uh, I I hadn't really thought about it in that aspect. Yeah. I thought of it more of just like just the labor side of it of having because like every time I cut, it's inevitable. I'll be cutting down the road, <laughs> and something will fall mm-hmm. to where it's like just like this, and I can't. You got to change the yeah, pitch on it. Just yeah. Have to get out and mm-hmm. move it. So I understand. That's what I've always looked at. Yeah, but, now that speed. That's another thing. Get back to time. Yep. It's gonna save you time. Yeah, because you you can cut like this, and mm-hmm. if something falls, you just hit the button, drop it down, mm-hmm. and cut it. And uh, it's the evolution we saw with lawnmowers in the '90s. Everybody had a riding lawnmower. Mm-hmm. Well, 2003, Kubota comes out with a zero turn. By 2007, 50 percent of the lawnmowers we saw sold were zero turns. Well, by 2010, 90 percent of the lawnmowers. Yeah, I like, guess. Yeah. And then now it's ninety nine percent. Yeah, you don't hardly ever it's see it. It's because a of the time, now. the time saving. You know. Yeah, we got one, man. I, I, it probably had to have been two thousand or two thousand one. We got our first zero turns. We had fifteen acres where mm-hmm. I grew up, and um, I just, I've had to have a, a zero turn mower. I was so excited. I didn't even cut grass at the time, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't realize this was a trap being set. <laughs> So you'd be cutting. We, we'll get this lawnmower, but your ass is out there yeah, on the lawnmower now. You're going to be now. the one doing it. Yeah. That. So we got an X mark. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was a six foot. Yeah. And I know it had to have been 2000 or 2001. And my, was it diesel or gas? It was gas. Okay. And my stepdad still has that mower. He's yeah. rebuilt it, put a new motor on it, pulled everything apart, painted it. He, But he still uses that mower mm-hmm. 22, 23 years mm-hmm. later. Uh, and I remember, like, I wanted a John Deere at the time because I bought into the, like, when you're young, like, John Deere's everywhere, so yeah, that's what you want. It's green, yeah. And uh, I remember we had to have an X mark because it had a welded deck. Yeah, they 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 started that. Yep. You know, they were in in the that time frame. They were the big zero turn, and I think that's where Kubota kind of came in was to compete with them. Right. You know? Yeah, and then and now my, everything we have's got a welded deck on. Yep, you know? that's the way to go. I mean, yeah, it's stronger, absolutely. and because I mean, with Last me, forever. if if we had bought one that was a stamp deck, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be around it. no more. I used to, man, I used to tear stuff up with that. We had a pond, like our land, like if you're looking at it from the road, the land went in and came down. Our pond was right in the center, mm-hmm. and we had this one spot that went up the center. It was kind of like just a little ravine, and we could never cut it with the regular mower. And man, I took that. Just hauled off in it. To, I mean, I was always tearing stuff up. Surprised my stepdad didn't shoot me when I was little. <laughs> but man, I yeah. The, so the zero turn mowers is definitely the way to go now. And yes. I, my last mower that I bought <clears throat> was a was a Kubota. Forget what model it was, but it was a, it was a nice mower. And we sold that house, and now we live on the river with a tiny lot. Yes, so you I don't, don't need it. Yeah, yeah, I don't have it anymore. But it was it was a good mower to have. And like I say, I, all the Kubota stuff that I that I've messed with is mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. The one thing, and you may be able to tell me this, so almost every tractor I get on, if I go to lift and curl the loader, mm-hmm. I can't do it. Yeah. I can lift it or I can curl it. Right. But every Kubota I'm on, right. I can do both. Yeah. And I, it's such a tiny thing, mm-hmm. but that like that simple fact alone is the reason that I will not own anything other than a Kubota. Yeah. Because you're always, like, it's just... The time, like it, you have to go up, up yeah. curl, up, curl. Mm-hmm. Like what is what? I can't remember what that valve is called because it's been so long since it changed. But you know, we sold bush hog loaders mm-hmm. for years, and we put them on our Belarus, and you know, we put them on Kubotas when we first started selling them. Right. And it had that valve, and I, I wish I could talk to my land proud rep. He was a bush hog rep, Rusty Buster. I don't know if you've ever met him. I haven't. And a uh, Kubota come out with that, that valve. You know, and it just changed. So are they? The, are they? Are they the only one that has it? I think it? everybody has it now. Older tractors, though, older New Holland, John mm-hmm. Deere's, Fords have will have that single use thing right. where you can't roll and curl. And it's so strange. Like we got a a brand new Coyote, yeah, XR KR. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a seventy three twenty. And I got in it. It has a, the self leveling bucket, yeah. so you don't have to worry about it as much. Yeah. But you can't do both. So it's still it's got a brand the, new it's still tractor. Still got the old style, yeah. yeah. As little things like that, like people, it's don't aggra- think that's about. aggravating. You get on a tractor and you want it to mm-hmm. roll and curl, and you want to take it takes you so long. Yeah. yeah, but it's like little things like that that people don't think of whenever they're they're buying or even know to look for when mm-hmm. they're buying a tractor until they've already used it. Yep, and then they say, "Hey, wait a minute." Yeah, this doesn't do what I want it mm-hmm. to. That's a, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Well, that's when you know they you know some people look at convenience, some people look at price. 
you know, and I try to get them to look at the utility, mm -hmm. you know, and put it all together. Yeah, that's my, like, I'm very fortunate. So I try to not be a price conscious mm -hmm. buyer. I mean, I try to be price conscious, obviously. I'm not going to blow money. But my thing is, like, my, my wife had to, my wife and I talk about this all the time. She'll, she'll pick something out. She's like, oh, I just got this because it's the least expensive, so I don't want you, I don't want to blow a bunch of money. I'm like, I gr I'm very grateful for that. Like, trust me, my wife, like I love her to death because mm. she she's not gonna blow money. Yeah, mine's the same way. But she sometimes she'll pick something out, and I'm just like, I'm not like we like spend some more money because if we're gonna spend the money, let's get what we want, and make yes. it nice. Because if we buy this other thing, we may save twenty percent, but then we're gonna lose a hundred percent of that because we have to buy another. Might be one. buying two of them, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's that is something like, but. I guess I don't know how to ask. Like, if you're trying to talk to a, whenever a customer comes in and, and they're wanting to buy a tractor, mm -hmm. how do you even bring up little things like that to to get them to understand? Like, this is why you want to go with this yeah. product versus this product. I get them try to get them to drive it. Okay, yeah, let's get on it and use it. Let me show you everything. Let me show you the ease of use. You know. Ergonomics of the you know sitting here, what you can do, how fast this is, because you know, I really try to push the hydrostatic transmission, mm -hmm. and it's hard to get old timers to get off a straight shift transmission. They think, man, that's going to last longer, that's going to hold up, and it just don't. You know, people ride the clutch, mm -hmm. keep a foot on it. You know, again, going back to time, if I'm having to push the clutch in and change gears. It's taking me longer to do my job, so I'm putting more time on my tractor. Right. Versus with a hydrostatic, I'm doing it faster. If I do a job in four hours with a hydrostatic, and it takes you six hours on a straight shift, well, after 10 jobs, I'm going to have 40 hours on my tractor, and you're going to have 60. Yep. You know, and it's the wear and tear, you know, of things like that, and I just try to show them, hey, this, you got this option. You know, okay, third function valve. Most people come in a grapple is their first thing they want, you mm -hmm. know. And I say, well, hey, look, if you get into the grapple, you can also do this lane shark. You can also put a post hole digger on the front. You know, that doesn't mean you you, you don't you know, have this one function. Right. And, you know, a lot of people buying a grapple see that lane shark, and they're like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't know. Yeah. And, I, and I show them, and, you know, bang, they're like, yeah, I want both. Yeah, you know? and that's, that's one. A lot of people buy those together. Yeah. A lot of them. It's one huge plus side to us partnering up with WR Long. Yes, it's like yeah. we can we can sell one kit. It's a you know, what, three, four hundred dollars mm -hmm. more to make it lane shark yeah, ready? Yep. So for an extra four hundred dollars you hit all that extra functionality. And you can just say Psh. And, and yeah, and there's no guesswork anymore. It, they come with instructions. You install mm -hmm. it's like a third function. Yep. Uh there's a couple extra wires that you gotta worry about. But man, like teaming up with them is I can't speak highly enough about them. And yeah. they've they've helped us out. They're so awesome. Much. They they've been so when COVID hit, <coughs> Kubota was having a hard time getting Kubota third functions mm -hmm. out. Like, I mean, six months, eight months. Yeah, that's wild. I called Nelson, hey, man, two, two, two days, we'll mm -hmm. have it to you. Anything I needed third function-wise and, you know, stuff like that, I'll deal with those guys forever because they helped us out. But we'd been dealing with them for a long time before right. that. I hadn't sold as much of their stuff before that, but I don't even order Kubota third functions anymore. Yeah, and yeah. we we ran into an issue recently, you know, because we when we tie into the third function, we tie into the third function, our switch box that we that was our standard. Now we have the handle, but mm -hmm. the switch box, all it does is just send out a positive twelve volt signal mm -hmm. to the third function, yeah. and the the Kubota third functions were. I don't know. I still can't haven't, haven't gotten a straight answer if the plug was just reversed or if they built them that way. But they were they were instead of sending out a positive, they were sending out a negative to turn it on. Mm -hmm. And we finally just one day realized there's a plug, and we had the we had the mechanics just start reversing that. It fixed everything. But it was like little things like Fuzz that. Fuzz figured that out in our shop. Too. Was okay. That yeah, was you guys figured it out. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So we had a guy had a M five O ninety one, and he kept he kept doing that. And we went over there once. We're like, what in the world's going on? We brought it back, and he figured it out. Okay, just in there playing with it. That's funny. That's you know, he's, you he's an expert, man. I mean, he's, you know, he was a car mechanic growing up with Randy. They're the same age; they were friends growing up. And uh, Randy's my uncle, by the way, that owns B Shears, and uh, he's been with us 
every step of the way. Right. He learned about the Russian tractors. He learned about Kubotas. You know, he's just a mechanical guy. He can figure things out. And, like, when it comes to hydraulics, you know, some people are savants at things. He's a, a genius at that stuff. Like, yeah. he can do it without even thinking about it. And me, I'm looking at him like, what? How did you do that? <laughs> you know, and he can put these things on in 45 minutes or an hour. And, you know, guy that of this other dealership is like, yeah, that took me three hours to put on. We're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's wild, man. We we get some of the dealers that'll tell us how long it's t- it took them to do an install, and I'm just I I, I can't quite get it because, you know, whenever we do an install, we're filming it, so yeah. it's like, hey, we got to set the camera up over here, we got to get this angle, we got to, and I'll still do them in two hours. Yeah, that's now, as long as it should take. Yeah, and two hours. we did a that that Cody. It took us what did it take us three hours. Of just install. Yeah. Yeah, three hours for install. And that was the most difficult tractor I've done. We had to take the rear tire off because Ooh. the valve mounts basically right behind the rear tire. Uh, there's access panels in the floorboard that you have to open up, and you have to pull. There's a hard line with banjo fittings. So you had to access panel, but then you got, say, the, the head of the fitting, you can only see this much of it from that access panel. So you could get an eighth of a turn with the wrench to pull it off. So it's just little stuff like that. It took forever. So that sounds like old tractor stuff mm-hmm. from the 70s and 80s. I mean, that's the way things were done back then, designs and hydraulics. I'll tell you, with a Kubota, man, yeah, I can... The newer stuff. Especially if I'm not filming myself, I can mm-hmm. do a Kubota install in 30 minutes. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, Fuzz has gotten to where I think 45 minutes max he's that's done. That's awesome. Yeah, and then with the new he's, handle... He's thorough makes, with that stuff, too. He doesn't just... Have you, so you may not pay attention that much, but have you noticed any difference in the install time with the switch box or with the new switch handle versus the it switch box? It takes him a few more minutes. Look, he's got the extra wire. You know, I've talked to him about it, like, you know, but he's like, that WR long stuff just goes right on there. Seamless. It's seamless and it's yeah. easy. And, you know, they always have all the parts in there. You know, you're never having to fish for. This, that, and the other that might come up missing. Yeah, quality control is good with those guys. Yeah, have you been? Have you ever been to their shop? I have not. It's it's impressive. I'd like to visit there next, maybe. They um. So Nelson, when we, if you're watching this, invite me up. <laughs> All you gotta do is call him. Yeah, man, he loves he loves having people up there. I, I, well, I say that he loves he loves when we come up there. I don't know about other people. Yeah, I don't want to say that yeah. to everybody. That's funny. But yeah, we went up there. Uh, I don't know if it was 2020 or 2021 when we first went up there, and they were in the shop that they'd been in forever. Mm-hmm. It's in it Tarboro, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And it, it was an impressive shop. And then we went back last year, and they had moved basically right across the street, mm-hmm. but they moved into a new shop. And it's, man, I think it's like a 100,000-square-foot shop. Ooh. It's big. And they got, man, they just got third functions just going all over. Everywhere, the place. yeah. They, it's impressive. Like, how, I'll be honest, when I went there and saw what they were doing, I didn't believe that it was possible the way they had it set up, but they've got their system so fine tuned. They've been doing it so long. Mm-hmm. Like, cause when I was thinking about doing the third functions myself and when I was doing our regular valve kits, like I had all this stuff laid out in my head of how it should be. And when I went up there and like, they're doing God knows how many they're doing, but the, the volume they're able to kick out with the, with the way it's set up is just, it, it'll blow your mind. But yeah, they've got a, a whole new setup there. They've got their, um, powder coat they've got all their their robots for the welding the grapples and everything it's it's really nice they've 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 grown a lot from those two visits That's and awesome. they uh, i talk to nelson usually probably once a month and they do they've got a couple of management programs that they participate in mm-hmm. and he's always telling me about and it's they're very very business focused okay. so that's that's they they focus a lot on making sure that place runs the way it needs to Cause they, yeah, like we need say, him around. Yes. <laughs> his his son Brandon, I guess, will take over when if Nelson ever wants to retire. And Brandon, yeah. you know, he's been growing up in it. They, like they got a they, like here, like they got a great group of that's people good, up there. Yeah. You call that's, them. That's and, so important, man. People don't understand. You know, you can't be turning over employees every six months. Oh yeah. Because you you, know, you just you know people build up a clientele, and you go in a place. And I mean, I'm kind of like this. I go in a place. And I'm used to seeing a certain person. I walk in there and it's somebody different or that person's not there anymore. And I'm You have to that build that. My, you have that to opens build my that mind rapport. Well, maybe I should go check at something else. You know? Right. You know, maybe yeah. I should go to this other place and see. 
Yeah, because the people that worked that, here left, maybe yeah, I should go somewhere else. The guy I'm familiar with is there who took care of me last time, and I walk in and he's still there. I'm mm-hmm. going to be comfortable when I walk in. Yep. Yeah. And so the people that work with you guys, like mm-hmm. you've got people that have worked there for, what, 20, 30 years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in sales, you know, it's been me and Rusty Williams. We've been there together both since about 95. Okay. You know, we hired another guy about two years ago. He kind of retired from the car business. And, uh, you know, guys in the shop, I've got three guys in the shop that have been with us since the beginning, you know, That's middle, awesome. middle, late 80s. You know, we've hired, we, you know, we have four more mechanics. So it's guys that have come along, but they've all been there, you know, several years now, too. So, and then our, our, our service manager, he was our parts manager for 20 years, 25 years. And we kind of moved him to service manager about two years ago. He's been there as long as I have. Yeah, there's one question I want. I always like to ask people when I talk to them is like, "How do you find good mechanics?" But I don't feel like I can ask you that because it's yeah. been so long since you've had to look. Well, for we've, one. We've, I mean, we've had mechanic turnover. You know, it's you know it's usually dependent on the person. You know, the guys that want to work and are good mechanics, they usually stick around. Mm-hmm. You have good mechanics that don't want to work. You know, you have bad mechanics that want to work, and you got to say, right. "Hey, man, you're you know." You've had six jobs that came back. You can't do it anymore. Right. You know, but we try to take care of the good people. Mm-hmm. The ones you see that want to work and know what they're doing. That's the that's the hard them. part is finding ones that, that want to want work. To work. Yep. Like I say, we've been very fortunate here, but man, we talk to people, you know, I, I listen I don't listen in on the conversation, but I sit in the office and I listen to conversations that, that Logan has with people or that Ross or JC mm-hmm. is having. And like you can tell, like they just don't – it's like they don't want to understand what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They just want to show up and do what they're told, and they have no desire to learn why things are the way mm-hmm. they are. Take some initiative. Right, and that's yeah. one thing. Like I, Growing up, everybody just thought I was nosy, and it's like I'm not nosy. I just want to know what the hell is going on so I can know how to – Do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I love to know what's happening so I can figure it out because like I, I love figuring things out. And I feel like that was one reason I was successful in my earlier career is I was a just a superintendent, but I knew what my production manager was doing. I generally kind of knew what my general manager was doing. I knew what my sales manager was doing. And that way when stuff came up, like either I could find the right person or I could fix the problem. And so just – and that's – we'll just say by being nosy. It's like I'm going to know what's happening because if something comes up, like I want to be able to fix it, because that's how I'm valuable. Yeah, but look where you are. Right. I mean, you know, most yeah. people aren't going to wind up there. Well, uh, you know, but like <laughs> maybe happy. not. Like but we they, said, they're comfortable. They're happy where they are. They just want to cruise. Yeah. That's, and you you had an idea and you you went with it. Yeah, and I'm never satisfied. And you turned. That's right. But you can't that's, be. Uh, yeah. Like I I can I can set a goal and I can get there mm-hmm. and I'm still not happy. Find another goal. I, th- I do. Mm-hmm. And I th- like, it's one side, like, it's great because it makes me successful, but I'm also, like, I'm always, like, maybe anxious is the word. Like, I'm trying to, like, I feel like if I do this next thing, maybe I can chill out. And it mm-hmm. never happens. And there's this quote that I think it's Alex Hormozzi, and it's like, you've already done, you've already done things that you said would make you happy. And it's like, I need to figure out that part. Like, I'm happy, but like, I'm just never satisfied. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if what I'm saying is coming out right. Yeah. But it's like, I'm just always like wanting to do more mm-hmm. and trying to, trying to learn. And, you know, like, say we're doing the manufacturing, I'm trying to get a new, another product. I want to build my brush cards again. I want to do like, I'm just always wanting to do stuff. But it's, it all stems from just like wanting to know what's going on and trying to solve problems. And I have no idea where I was going with that, but. <laughs> Well, look, I'm not an Alabama fan, but that sounds like a Nick Saban video. <laughs> There's a video of him that says, hey, if you want to be happy for a day, go play golf. I can't remember the rest of it, but, you know, if we had uh, Jamie here, Joe Rogan would say, Jamie, pull it up. But, you know, <laughs> there's a video of him, you know, saying, you know, finding that happiness, you got to always challenge yourself. Yeah. You know? And That is one thing, like, always And he's right about that. I mean, the guy's yourself. a great coach, you know. He's a great motivator. And, you know, he you can tell because the level of success he kept for so long, you know, he lived by what he was preaching, mm-hmm. what he was teaching. Yeah. I got respect for him. I don't 
necessarily like him, but I have respect for him. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe hey, Brandon does. Have is this it? Or not. That may be it. I don't know. Let's try it. I saw it on Instagram on a reel. Oh yeah, yeah. The, I say this to every team, and I, I give them this sermon every team in the beginning of the season because I want them to relate to this. You know, if you want to be happy, this is it. Yeah. Yep. Eat a steak. If you want to be happy for a day, go play golf. If you want to be happy for a week, go on a cruise. If you want to be happy for a month, go buy a new car. But if you want to be happy in your life, just ask yourself one question. If I didn't show up here today, would anybody miss my ass? There you go. Because then you know you accomplished something of significance. I think everybody here would miss you, Travis, if you didn't show up today. I, I you know, I would agree. <laughs> they might... They might not miss me for the first day, at least. Yeah. They might be like, damn, I'm glad he's not here today. I can yeah. do something else. But, yeah, I, that's a that's a good quote. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, I try to, like, nurture everybody's ability, yeah. so I think they would miss me. At least I'll, I'll tell myself that. <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah so. Um, yeah, so the Nick Saban thing, I really think he's talking about, like, Things got down to crunch time. You weren't here today. Mm -hmm. Would it matter? You know, if something big was going on, and the team needed you. Yeah. Or the team needed something, and you weren't here. Would it matter? You know, would you not being here today matter? Yeah, I. I mean, your ideas I, matter. I can tell you, walking around this place and watching I, the thing with your dad. I mean, the, you know, y'all coming up with that thing and and actually doing. Your dream. It's it's and making it happen. It's still like I still yeah. A lot of times have imposter syndrome about it. Yeah. Because I'm like, I, I built houses for ten <laughs> years. Like, why am I? What am I doing? But I but I love like like I say, I've just been super fortunate. Mm -hmm. I cannot. Stress and I, and that I think enough. you're here, and you're gonna be here. At I'm the end of I'm the hoping so. You are. I'm I'm trying to set it up that yeah. way. But man, I I really thought. That we would do four or five a month. Like my dad do something on the weekend, yeah. and it would, and he he would stay busy. Be a side hustle. Yeah, yeah. Because I I've always loved building houses, mm -hmm. and um, you know I I did that for ten years in Greenville. I started my own company building custom homes, and I really just lost focus. Greenville's beautiful, by the way. Oh yeah, I love the downtown town. Greenville, man. That river. I spent oh my way gosh. too many nights downtown. <laughs> that place is cool with it. Which is why I moved back here. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I I went from, you know, building, <clears throat> when I was a super, I was doing, you know, between 20 and 40 houses at a time. Mm -hmm. And then I was area manager and I had like 12, 14 people that worked, uh, supers that worked under me. Yeah. We were doing a couple hundred houses at a time. Then to building custom homes, and I had two houses at a time. So I was not that busy. And so I just went out all the time and mm -hmm. lost focus, yeah. which is why I moved back here because I I, I could see myself going down mm -hmm. the, the wrong path. The easy road, yeah. Yeah, it would have mm -hmm. been real hard there at the end, but yeah, it but, was easy at the time yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so, like, I moved back and thought I was going to build houses, thought Dad would, you know, build a couple units a month, and, you know, it's just taken off. Like, we've been very fortunate. And, um, and I... I love because I've always kind of like changed, like get bored and I'll change things. But the great, that's one of the great things about being here is I'm able to focus on the core mission because I have good people. Mm -hmm. And then that allows me and my, my ideas go the next to go step. and do yeah. other things. And so it, 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 it's, it's, it nourishes my ability or maybe not nourish, but it caters to my ability to like, go all over the place with my mind and, and try to focus on... Well, you said you're a creative. Yes. You are. I mean, you can tell. I, mean, I, I love I love building things with my hands, like mm -hmm. as you can tell with the boat, yeah. you know, and just all that stuff. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. Very fortunate. Um, I wasn't born with that gift. It, like, I just learned how to do a square <laughs> angle with two pieces of wood about two weeks ago. You do the... Like, I was... Up, I grew up around mechanical stuff, motors, mm -hmm. and, 
you know, lawnmowers, transmissions, you know, I could I could make something run. Mm-hmm. But building, yeah. painting something, building something. Well, paint, paint. No, my... I no idea, man. Yeah. I just didn't. I didn't do that stuff growing up, and I have no clue how to do it, man. Yeah. It is funny, like, I, the older I get, the more I think about, you know, the older I get, plus having kids, the more I think about my childhood and, like, how, peop- how people are raised differently. Mm-hmm. And, like, with me, my mom is a hairdresser, but she also loves doing woodworking. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a plasma cutter at one point, and she would make butterflies and stuff. Like, she's always been super creative and artistic. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't have the artistic side. Yeah. I have the creative side. And then my stepdad... He worked on the railroad forever, but he is a gunsmith, and he got hurt on the railroad, okay. so now he's full-time gunsmith. But his thing, he's got more patience than anybody I've ever met. But he can, I mean, he can take anything and turn it into whatever you want. Like, I remember one of the biggest memories I have about him is he took a, a gun stock. Like, basically, he had bought, it was basically cut in a square. Like, just, if you imagine a gun stock, but blocky. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And he hand carved that thing down to a thumb hole stock, and it like I still am trying to find that gun. He can't remember who Get he sold it, it to. I'm trying. I'm still trying to find that gun yeah. to this day, so I can buy it back. Mm-hmm. But just being a, so, he's got the patience to be artistic and creative. But like for some reason, I never got the patience. So he was meticulous. Very okay. And then my dad, you know, he's he's been a welder his whole mm-hmm. life, so he builds things, and so I just got it naturally. Mm-hmm. But, like, what I was saying is, like, thinking about how people are raised differently. Like, my wife, like, her parents, they were both teachers. They weren't entrepreneurs, which is nothing wrong with that. But yeah. whenever her and I got together, like, I was trying to get her to, like, create her own yoga studio mm-hmm. or do these types of videos. And she had never even thought that was a possibility because that's just what she, what's not what she was it's raised It's change in the risk I was talking about earlier. you got to step out and have the confidence. And a lot of people just don't. Don't want to take, don't want to change anything because it's well, yeah, uncomfortable. That, that and like just not even thinking that it's yeah, a possibility. That's what they, they don't cross their mind. Yeah. yeah. So, like I say, I've been very fortunate to have wonderful parents that help nurture my ideas. Like I kind of mentioned with dad. Um, but yeah, like my, my mom and I, like the very first logo that we had that was the shark. Mm-hmm, yeah. My mom and I drew, like my mom hand drew it. I came up with the idea. My mom made that that's logo. Awesome. We were sitting at the the kitchen counter one night and uh, made that logo, and then we changed it over time. And I it really, it really like hurt, not hurt me, but I felt like I lost a part of it whenever Changing we it. changed it because we had to like modernize it, and it it does look more professional. But yeah. like, I I loved the fact that my dad and I kind of created it together. My mom and I created the logo, and like just all of that. Man, so you had to change. You didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I I I don't like change. I I love like it is funny. It's such a contradiction. Like I mm-hmm. I don't like change at all. Mm-hmm. But I'm always changing my like everything. You're always I trying do. to do something yeah. different. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a conundrum. It's yeah. Very strange how my my brain works. Um. So like, well, I already know the answer to that. I was going to ask a question. I knew the answer to. Um. So. I noticed you said you like to golf a lot. Mm-hmm. So, and this is just, like, because I think about this a lot. Like, I, do you use golf as, like, a, a getaway, like a, a way to clear your mind? <laughs> more, I do sort of more now that I'm older, but I grew up playing competitive sports. Mm-hmm. And when that was over, I missed that competitive side of things. And there's always a golf tournament to play in. I got you. Always. You can play one four days a week if you want to and go compete. You know, and I'm just really competitive. So that's probably one thing that makes you a good salesman, yes, too. Yes, and that's, and that's that it just, I just, I hate to lose more than I like to win. <laughs> I remember losing more than I do winning. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the losing bothers me more than the winning does. Big wins, they're like a blur. Yeah. Losses, I'll, that'll burn me for a long time, you know. Yeah. That makes I mean, there's, sense. there's some golf losses that it's still 17. 18 years ago that I can still remember vividly. That's and I've funny. won some stuff and I can barely remember winning it and getting the gift certificate or the cash. And huh. It's the same thing on sales. Like when I lose a sale, it bothers me. Mm-hmm. You know? Just yeah. ugh, like when I, you know, I'll forget making a sale faster than I will missing one. I understand that. Yeah. yeah, speaking of sales, so that's one thing we mentioned at lunch a while ago. Yeah. 
I want you to talk about this because I want other people to hear it. And yeah. that is, you know, you guys are the top uh, volume lawnmower. dealer. Yeah, lawnmower. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think as individual place, Oxford has been the top volume dealer as an individual store right. east of the Mississippi. And so, what I'm getting at is like I, I use you guys as an example a lot of times when I do talk to dealers, mm -hmm. and um, without fail when I mention your name, they always kind of cringe like, oh yeah, they just you know they're just volume dealers and they're not making any money. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to hit on that and yeah. explain y'all's process because I there's no way y'all are just selling a bunch we're, of tractors we're and not, not making the any money. We're not the cheapest ones out there. Right. There are people advertising stuff cheaper than we do, you know, but we put a lot of effort into having a lot of different choices. And we, you know, we have our process competitive. And, you know, if you want to come in and just buy the bare bones thing that I'm advertising, yeah, we're not going to hit a home run. Right. But if you come in and you say, well, you know what, I want to change this and I want to add this and I want to do this. You know, by the end, we're doing okay because we're still in business, you know. Yeah, clearly. And, you know, <clears throat> this happened this week. I had a customer that said, hey, I sent 10 emails to 10 different dealers. Six of them didn't email me back. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Four of you, you know, of the four, you had the, you know, best price. You and another guy were about the same. But, you know, you you said, hey, we'll we'll give you free delivery Hey, come in. I'll show you how to go over everything. You know, so you being can call attentive, me anytime. You know, just be, being you know. attentive to the customer yes. and giving them a, a wide variety mm -hmm. of options. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, I, it just makes me laugh when people like they 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 try to say that stuff. It's like, well, they you know we're trying to stay in business. That's why we we can't compete. It's like, well, they're in business too, and they're mm -hmm. they're doing really well. Yeah. Like maybe maybe you guys should talk to them and like figure out what they're doing and try to try to cater towards that. But it's like they, they a lot of people seem to think like, well, I have to make this much money off this one sale. And that's like the... They're not the, looking at the big picture. They're, yeah, they're focused yeah. on what's in front of them. You can't treat everybody the same. Every deal is different. Yep. Every customer is different. You know, and, you know, like we're talking about every lawnmower, it's the same price no matter where you buy it. Mm -hmm. Now, tax rate might be different here. Versus over here, you know, there might be a $20, $50 difference in something, but it's basically the same thing. But we keep everything in stock. You know, we can get it ready for you. Hey, you want to pick up this afternoon? You call this morning. Yeah, we'll get it ready for you. Yeah, that we're right not going to say, awesome. oh, it'll be Friday when it's Monday. Right. You know, that kind of stuff, wanting to hustle and get after it is what sets you apart. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, pushing. Pushing stuff. Yeah, out like I said, door. I hate to lose a sale. Oh yeah, well, I hate to lose. Period. You know? I get it. <laughs> I hate to lose a sale too. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, like you talk to someone and you're like, I, I hope they go buy somewhere else. Yeah, but uh, that's that's pretty rare. It's uh, you know, it, it sucks that you get that feeling about some people. You generally, know? you're right when you get that feeling. I think you know, you know, <laughs> like I said, like we were saying earlier, the the guy that's gonna squeeze you for every thing you got, every penny you got, you know, he's going to ask for something free, you know, after you've already given him something free. Right. You've given him a hat or you've given him an oil filter or, you know, you've given him free delivery. You've given him a couple straps to strap the tractor down. You know, they want something else. Fill it up with fuel. Which, mm -hmm. you know, we do that too. But, I right. mean, like, just use that example. Hey, I want a first service, you know, $350 service for free. You're like, I can't. Yeah, especially like you've already done the handshake deal, yeah. you're done, and then, and then by the way. Yeah, I want this, this, you know, that guy, he keeps wanting, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes. And, you know, you got to deal with those people. You got you to sell them. But it's harder to deal with it than those people that are, you know, the guy that comes in is like, hey, look, I've shopped around. You guys are competitive. You're close to me. Or, you know, the guy close to me wasn't competitive. I came here. You know, yeah, I mean that that I, I want to buy something. Yeah. Um, so one thing that that I noticed that is big with you guys that that I think sets you all apart, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but y'all y'all started offering the Lane Shark as part of the package deals. Yeah. So can we, you tell me a little bit about what we, you know? Do we've there? always kind of done the pack. So I came up with that package builder on our website. Okay. And Kubota's kind of copied me. They came up and kind of started doing it on their website after we did it, which is funny, but. <clears throat> The guy that designed our website came up with that for us. Mike Major, by the way, he's great. He works with uh, Lee Golf. Uh -huh. I know you talk with Lee. 
And uh, we, me and Randy kind of had that idea. I guess Randy kind of had the idea, and I kind of come up with the ideas to put it in motion. And I got with some website guys. I'm like, hey, can we build this? This was in 2014. You know, it started out with just like tractor loader, bush hog, box plate, you know, like tractor loader, bush hog, tiller, you know, finish more. We started adding the third function valve, the grapple. You know, and it was about a year ago I said, hey, we're going to sell these lane sharks. This is something that's going to take off. If they can get us inventory, we can we can move these things. And you started, you know, you guys started getting us like eight a month. And that's why I talked with JC. I was like, hey, I'm going to put these on our package builder and make a video. And, you know, I think it's – and it's already – even the slow winter months, it's, we've done well with mm-hmm. it. I think once we get to the time where p- people are going to need those, it's going to really – So you, so y'all came up with that. That wasn't anything to do with Kubota. That mm-hmm. was all y'all's was idea all us, yeah. and, and started that. So I our, was thinking of something to keep us going in the slow months. Right. And, you know – Cab tractors in the slow months, they'll sell better because people get cold. Think about it a lot. They, more. Well, they, they, like, I got to go out and feed my cows, or I got to go take care of this on my property. It's cold. And, you know, they want to put that thing on there because they're getting, like I said, they're usually getting a grapple or something mm-hmm. as well. And that, that's the thing that when I show people what it will do and how versatile it is, if it's in their budget, it's usually an easy sale. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had to give other tractor dealers any advice, mm-hmm. what what do you think the most important thing would be that you could bestow upon them? Don't treat everybody the same. You know, you can't have these cookie cutter responses when somebody says, Can you beat that price? You know, can you can you do this? Can you do that? You gotta take every single deal and treat it individually. You know? So like when the customer comes in, you yeah. try to you try to nail down like you ask them everybody's all different. kinds of questions you to know? figure out their exact needs. How, and, how much land do you have? How right. much? Well, you know, what what kind of payment can you afford? Are you paying cash? You know, are you needing to write this off on your taxes? You know, I got gotcha. you. You know, are you ready to buy it now? You know, if, we're, if we're dealing, and I got to cut it a little bit, and you're ready to buy it now. You know, we can usually work something out. Gotcha. Know? Yeah, taking care of the customer when they're in front of you is definitely yes, easier absolutely. and yeah. more productive than than waiting until they leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, we recently bought my wife a car, and they gave us a price, and I was like, all right, you give it to me for this, I'll buy it right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't negotiate. Yeah, I hate like, that. I hate car dealer stuff. It's just... So, <laughs> but we go to leave, yeah. and the guy, like the sales manager that, mm-hmm. that couldn't negotiate, he's like, if you if you decide you want it, let me know. I throw if I, I throw in like a hundred dollar discount or whatever. I'm like, I just keep, okay. I'm you leaving. Said you don't negotiate. But, yeah. right, I'm like I'm leaving. You said yeah. you don't negotiate. So but here you are, and so we left. Like I fully intended on not buying that car. Mm-hmm. So the next morning they call me. They're like, hey, uh, if you'll do the if you'll do this, we'll we'll sell it. To you. I'm like, I thought you didn't negotiate. Mm-hmm. Like you like it. If my wife hadn't wanted the car so bad, I would have just I would have said, listen. I you understand. lied to me. Yeah. So I got no desire to buy but this car. But they have is it a new car? Uh, I was used. It was okay. A, was it was it a new car dealership? Yes. Yeah, it, okay, so it was a Honda dealership. These it was guys a certified pre owned thing. These in this car and that's why tractors are so much different. I'm glad I'm not in the car business. Like Randy grew up in it. Mm-hmm. I never had to do it. They have these Honda, Toyota, Nissan, whoever, Chevrolet, Hyundai. They've got these sales classes they go to. Mm-hmm. They've got to go through that process. They've got a sheet. All the we, cookie cutter all the cookie responses. Cur- yeah, we can't negotiate. Well, what if we do this? Well, get their name and phone number. If they don't do this, call them tomorrow and say this. You know, and it's just like a robot. Right. You know, and you're going to get some people that way. And I guess they've got a system where they got, you know, we're, we're, they're going to get more than they lose. I don't know. But it's just never worked for us, you mm-hmm. know. I just don't. I've never liked it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that because they either. treat they treat everybody the same. It's yeah. everybody gets the same response, and then when you get to number seven or eight on my sheet, and you still haven't made the sale, then you start changing things up. Right. Know? Um, I hate I hate that <laughs> way of selling things. Yeah. So on pricing, you does does Kubota dictate what the the 
Only the on bottom the line. Only on the lawnmowers. Okay. Yeah, only on the lawnmowers. So you got more room. And to the negotiate. reason they do that, and it makes sense. I'm glad they do. You don't want a guy going 200 miles away to buy a lawnmower and need service because lawnmowers need more service, right? Usually than and then everything else does. You know, you got blades and belts and a lot of moving parts, and you want them to be able to take that thing locally and get it worked on. So if they buy it from a different dealership, you just, will y'all service yes, it? Yes, we, we will. You get a lot of guys that are like, oh, we'll put you at the back of the line. Uh, How am I going to sell you something else? If I treat you like shit If now. I treat you like shit because you bought something somewhere else. Yeah. How am I going to sell you a utility vehicle or a tractor? When you bought a lawnmower somewhere else and you come in here and I'm a dick to you when you come in to get it serviced. Right. You know, we, we have the opposite. That's, like That's the whole focus in on what's in front of you right. versus the big picture. Exactly. We're going to take care of that guy just like he bought it from us, you know, and hopefully his next purchase is with us. Right. You know. All right. So. And that happens a lot. You know, most people don't just buy one lawnmower in their lifetime or, right. one, you know, one tractor. You know, now. You do have people that buy one tractor, but it's it's right. rare, you know. Right. Yeah. And as long as I've been around, a lot of people have worn that first one out and they come back and bought a second one for yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, know? you've been so yeah. How old are you now? I'm 48. So you've been in it for since I was 20. 20 I've been, I've been years. selling since 30? I was 20, 28. Okay. okay. And I've been there since I was 15. So. Yeah, that's that's impressive. 33. Yeah. It's always it's always refreshing to run into people that have been at a place for that long, because mm -hmm. it it to me it speaks more about the people around you than yeah. anything. Because you're not gonna stay in a, a place if people around you are yeah. assholes. Mm -mm. And you know, and it's my it's my family too. But I went to college. I got a degree. Yeah, but have you met some people's families? Yeah, I know. So, oh, okay. Yeah, mine's crazy too. Sorry guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, Randy's Randy's probably the most sane person in my family. But, yeah. Well, that's good since he owns the place. Yeah, absolutely. He's <laughs> the most level-headed, you know, and then that's why we've been so successful. Though he's a, you know, level-headed, doesn't make any emotional decisions, you know, very detail-oriented. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I I uh, which I never these never make it out of the door, but like. There's a lot of emotional reactions oh, that I have. Like man. Yeah. I don't, I don't ever blow up around here. But like people, like the guys will tell me something. A customer stuff. Like man, exactly. No. Yeah. And then, and then, like I'll go sit in my office for a second. But like, all right, think about this. Mm -hmm. Go back and you can't take it personal. Right. And that's like, even though that make you red have, faced. I yeah. have evolved over over yeah. the past seven years to shorten that response time. Of I mean, or to. To shorten the correction time, like I used to, like get mad about something and like we're not doing that, and then the next day I'd come back like, well, let's okay, we can do that. Now, like I'm, I'm able to like process it. Compromise, yeah, yeah. The thing to me was, and you know, we were talking about this earlier. You get the Facebook commenter or the people that you know want to text, send messages, and you just can't tell the context of the way people are yes. saying things. Just pick up the phone and call. And talk to me. Now, look, I, I want to commu communicate with you through social media. But if you got a problem, we need to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to talk about it. Yep. You know, they need let it. me get you to the proper channels. You know, if something somebody did didn't make you happy, hey, let's talk to Randy. Let's talk to me. Let's talk to my service manager. Yeah, give us a chance to fix it. Yeah, let, let's talk about it. Right. Let's not put a one star review because you didn't like the price of a blade. That my parts guy quoted you, you know. Yeah. Last year it was fifty nine dollars. This year it's sixty nine dollars, and that constituted you giving a one star review. You know. Think, hey, I don't know if anybody has noticed this, but prices have gone up in the last four years. Yeah. A I lot. don't care what you're buying. Yeah, yeah. A lot. And you know, steel. It geez. fluctuates so yeah. much. It's man. so much. It's like I wish I wish I had had the foresight to just spend all my money on steel Every when COVID penny, happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it dropped Be like, like buying gold. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Been like buying gold, yeah, oil yep. and steel, yeah, those two things, yeah. Those would have been some great, which anything would have been a great investment back at in March of 2020. Man, mm -hmm. it was wild how Crazy. much stuff tanked and then shot up. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're about to have another correction soon. A lot of a lot of the billionaires are selling off a <laughs> lot of stock right now. Well, you know this AI stuff is killing it though. Yeah, it's a AI I, stocks. It's just, so wild yeah. to see what's happening, man. We. Which we use a lot of the like chat GPT stuff, mm -hmm. like especially like 
you use it a good bit, don't you? Yeah, for research. And yeah, yeah. And, and Nick, like our IT guy, man, whenever he first started using it, he would tell me about it. And I'm like, go ahead and pay for the subscription price because it was yeah. a little bit better and mm-hmm. faster. And, man, it's it's like doubled his, his output. Yeah, it's crazy. But he's a wizard anyway, like yeah. even without that. Like I, I always call him our wizard. Like the other day, because <laughs> um, we're in the, per- the process of buying this building and we had the appraiser walk through and we were walking past Nick's office, and the guy's like, if you can give me a sketch of the new layout and everything, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm like, okay. Literally walked from Nick's office to my desk. Bing. He already sent it. He had, he had, he had it already, already, but okay. he heard that and just sent it to me. I'm like, you fucking wizard. <laughs> like, he's just, it's wild. Yeah. He's Harry Potter. Oh, man. he He's, uh, <laughs> which Nick, it's funny, Nick, um, he worked at a place called Coldwater Gardens, and they bought a lane shark. It was like the 40th unit mm-hmm. that we sold. And so he and I kind of hit it off and became friends, and he did our first website for us. He did a bunch of, like, our first 3D model, just, like, helping us out. Like, didn't even – I didn't even ask him to do a 3D model. He just did it on his That's own because awesome. he thought it was a cool thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess, like, two years ago now uh, – we just happened to call him at the right time. He was wanting to do something different, and he came to work for us, man. I Funny how things work that way. It is. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't believe like I never, throughout all the years that he helped me, I never thought that he would leave that place, especially, or let alone come work for us. Like, it's Well, you're, you're going to keep growing and see more of that. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah, because you, if you have a good business, good people are going to work for you. Yeah. They're going to want to work for you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You're going to have more... People, good, good people, are gonna to want to come work for you when you keep growing. Got to, got, to, got to get some good, uh, some good fabricators and assembly guys now. So the special edition, remember that thing, the black. Yeah, man, we had people fighting over those things, people putting deposits on them. That's fun. Had to have them. Maybe we need to do some more we all black do, ones. We need to do it again, LS4. just like a little short run. I can do it. Oh, it was. I got. I have the very first black one sitting out there. It's all covered in, in dust and everything, but I've got it sitting out there on the shelf. I, the guy was like, "Hey, hey," it's because it's, you know you had it numbered. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like they're buying a baseball card or something special. Yeah, that know? was that was the main thing I wanted to yeah. have because I knew I knew people would like that. <coughs> but we me. like when I, it was funny when I first started, people would always complain about the color. Like, ah, oh, can can we get it black? Or can yeah. we get? I'm like, nah. Every everybody does the matching color to the tractor thing. Mm-hmm. Do something that keep keeps you apart. Right, you and know? that's what's funny is keep, I keep thought yourself. You know, I thought when we did the special, like it, it was kind of like a it's just a, a reverse specific place. Like you just reverse some places, black and green. Yeah, we just made it a whole black. And then, but you had green. Right. Letters. Yeah, letters. Yeah, the letters. Yeah. So it's still, you know. But what I what I was getting at is I thought when we did the black one, I figured they would sell like that. Yeah. And in some places they did. And some people, like, they had gotten every so used got to the that. green yeah. that they didn't want the black. People want to be different, though. Like, they were coming, they came in and, like, so this was, it says, you know, one of mm-hmm. seven of tw- 200. How many did you make? We did 200 of the LS2s 200, and 100 yeah. of the LS3s. It LS3. said, like, seven of 200 on it. Oh. Yeah. So I would show them, like, hey, they're only making 200 of these. Huh. You know, yeah, we could do it with the. We can't. We, we can't do it again like, with the LS3s. We, we sold them like the bam, 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 bam. Yeah, do an LS4. Okay, That'll, we'll definitely take that. Do something with that. I did. I knew we had like certain people that liked them, but I, yeah. I just. I guess I didn't get enough feedback on it. So we used to have the the Belarus. I'll go back to that in the nineties. I'm and Randy remember this. So Randy was you know old car guy. So these old car guys in the seventies, eighties. I don't know if you remember this because you're you know you're a little younger than me, but they put a stripe on every car. Do you remember stripes on cars? Oh yeah. So we would put a yellow stripe on the hood. We put a special edition sticker above the stripe in yellow. If it had that sticker on it, sell for five hundred dollars more every time. Nothing That's different. So funny. Yeah. It had the yellow stripe and the special edition sticker on it. Yeah. And that was it. I, I mean, I get it ready to tell you about that. It was, and you know, people had if it said special edition on it. It's like the, you know, like now we have a 35, 60, and 40, 60 Kubota. Mm-hmm. Well, it says limited edition. Well, Is that the one that's the... It's the, actually the, a base model. Well, you know. Okay, that's not the one I'm thinking of. They did one uh, that had like the... 60, 60 that had the burn orange. Yes. Yeah, so that that thing we could have auctioned it off. For Man, if I if I didn't have a tractor to that oh, time, I, I would have bought awesome. that. It Those was so things pretty. Were, that, that thing, we, we got it in, and uh, we had a customer that was wanting a 60, 60. And he just paid MSRP. He didn't care what it cost. Yeah. 
you know, it's like, oh, I gotta have that, you know. Yeah, that burnt orange was was it was awesome. It was beautiful. Yeah, we've been hoping they're gonna do some more. This is it's the same concept though. What I'm telling you, right. like, people see it and they think it's, you know, and it is something different. I mean, you you're gonna look different mm-hmm. than the other guy. You know, the one off things. We'll have to do more of that then. Yeah. You know. So I coach my I help coach my daughter's soccer team. Yeah, I meant to ask you about that. So she, you know, she's she's going to play at UAH, and I've, I've been helping her high school team. I think ever since after COVID, I started helping. <clears throat> the coach that was there, he was kind of transitioning out, and uh, got a buddy of mine to help me. That was a younger guy that was that was coaching. I think local. that uh, could this is still recording, so go ahead and get that closer oh, to oh, you okay. because because this may be so, some good stuff. And. Uh, <laughs> It's you know it's really helped me this kind of stuff like that the Nick Saban thing like just teamwork and right you know think about building the team. I didn't play soccer. Right. I played, I played I played baseball. You know. And I'm too I'm too out of shape to even think about playing. But soccer. I, when she started playing it, I could see at a very young age she was good. She was better than everybody else. Boys, girls, it didn't matter. When she was six, seven years old, so I really nurtured that. In her, you know, she was good at golf too. Like, I taught her how to play golf when she was I mean, from two years on. Right. You know, she she won a lot of golf tournaments, and I think she gravitated more to soccer just because of teammates being around her friends. Because golf's a lonely individual sport, mm-hmm. and it's cutthroat. Everybody's parents are, you know, rude, and you go to a tournament, everybody wants their kid to win. Really? Oh yeah, it's bad. And soccer's definitely more orange slices, and you know. Everybody take a picture after the game, and right. everybody hang out, and you know it's it's a lot different. So, I hadn't really ever thought about that. I started learning the sport just for her, and I learned a lot. I mean, I really learned a lot the last fourteen years of her playing. But I'm retiring. This is I mean, like I'm helping. Yeah, I saw you after she's graduating. I'm going done, to college. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go again. watch her, and, and I'm going to focus more on, you know, being a with a business more than more. I'm trying to get to Opelika more because I've I've only been down there like once or twice a year. Mm. And I'm going to, you know, try to help Randy out because I know he's kind of taking it a little more easy. He's not working as much as he used to. And step step into his and shoes. She, her season will be in the fall, which is good for me because that's when we start slowing oh, down, yeah. you know. And I'll have the springs because like now – Two days a week, I'm having to go to school and help out with practice about 3.30. And then usually two days a week we'll have a game, but it's not till 5 or 5.30. So sometimes I'll have to leave early. It depends on where we're playing. Right. <clears throat> so it's taken, you know, a good bit of my time. But it's been really good for me too, though, to see teamwork and helping people come together as a group. And Yeah, that's something I could, uh, I could definitely use some help mm-hmm. with is because – like my management style is like, like I said earlier, like give everybody what they need and then yeah. check on them. Mm-hmm. And then if they need something, take care of it. But I've, I'm never like trying to actively like build team. Sh- like chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Like I, cause I, I've always been like, I was, I'm the only child from my mom. So like growing mm-hmm. up, it was just me and my mom and my stepdad. And so I've always just been one to work alone. Mm-hmm. And so like I focus on what I'm doing and I and I go towards that. And mm-hmm. then hey, you good? You need anything? All right, cool, leave me alone. Yeah. So that's that's something I could I definitely should try to focus on more cuz I I kind of depend on Caitlin to help yeah. me do deal with the teamwork stuff. But uh you got you got to show everybody that no matter if they're the star or they're just, you know, Somebody that's keeping the engine running, but they matter, right? You know, and every everybody's pulling the same direction. You know, win or lose, you got to pull in the same direction. Yeah, that's that's the one thing. Like, I feel like we're very good at is we're we're pulling in the same direction, mm-hmm. but there's definitely moments where people. <laughs> they 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 forget that other people are. Yeah, part of the team. Mm-hmm. I guess is probably the easiest way to say that. Yeah. So that's the part that I have a hard time with is like, I can like I I'll like deal with that instance, but then I forget about everybody else that, that had to deal with it. And I so get like, that in the sales side of it too. Yeah. You know, you get salesmen that 
they get a little about me, me, me instead of we. Right. And it's about we. It's not about me. If you sell something, I'm happy because the company sold something. Yep. You know, that's always been one of the things I say is like, take care of the company. The company will take care of you. Yep. yep. But if you're taking, if you're taking care of you, the company's going to suffer. Yep. And so that that is a big thing that I don't even know where I learned that from. Like normally those those specific things, like little sayings that I always have, I, I remember where they specifically came from. But that one, I I don't know where it came. Probably from a movie, most <laughs> likely. But like my my first job out of high school, I built electrical control panels. And my boss, like there was a lot of little nuggets like that I learned from him. And like the biggest one is like if you're not fucking up, you're not doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, he would always say, like, but if you do mess up, tell me about it. And if I and if you made like or, or like say you got to make a decision and nobody's around, like, don't just sit still, like make the decision with the best to the best of your ability. And if you and if you mess up, I'll stand behind you. But if you don't do anything like I'm going to chew your ass. Yeah. It's like move forward, make progress. You don't learn unless you make mistakes. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's. That's like that's the whole, you know, the saying now that's very popular is "fuck around and find out." Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I just clicked with me maybe a year ago or something. Like that's my entire life motto. Is like <laughs> I just like just to try. Yeah. Like the only way I'm gonna know if it works is if I try it or you know break it or it succeeds. But I don't I don't have a problem breaking stuff, man. Like when we were building that boat, I bought a I bought the jet ski. Yeah. To for the donor motor, and uh. Like all, like my buddy was telling me, he's like, you need to, you need, you know, break it open. You can sell the hole and all that. And I'm like, mm, I took a Matabo with a saw blade <laughs> all yeah. the way around, and just peeled it apart. <laughs> like, hey, it worked. Yeah, I got it. Oh yeah. It's my daughter's like, in France, by the way. Oh really? Yeah. So the school took a Europe trip this week. They t- they have what's called intercession. Okay. And they went to London. They left last Friday. They went to London, and then Normandy. And then they went to uh, Mont Saint Michel. That's awesome. And then they're in Paris right now. Oh, uh, she and going to like the Louvre and all that. Yeah, they they went to the uh, Eiffel Tower today. Yeah, look, she just sent me a picture. That she's there. Look, I think she oh, just tried awesome. to call me from there, Facetimes. <laughs> that's why I was looking at my watch. You're good, man. Um, so to kind of. Since we have gotten a little late yeah. here, uh, is there any any topics that you would like to talk about that we haven't mentioned today? I mean, I don't, I can't think of anything really. Okay, you know, um, we could do this again sometime. You know, man, I'll be when you glad start to. getting when you start getting some of these ideas we've talked about, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> the BX thing, the the uh, skid steer cutter. Yeah, as soon as I yeah. get so, like I say, my goal is by the hopefully by the end of the year to have all my manufacturing stuff ironed out, and then I can yeah, really I'm start ready to focusing get a on the new on the lot to start new products. People. Well, like I say, I ho- want to get one first. Hopefully, two months. We could probably work that out. Okay. Um, but basically, the thing that's delaying us right now is my 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 robot welder. Like it's it was supposed to be here the eighth, yeah, and then it was supposed to be here today. They pushed it back out. So like, I, where is it coming from? So it's coming from Atlanta, but the it's uh, OTC Daihan. It's a Japanese company mm-hmm. that that's good that, where it started, and yeah. it's all single source suppliers. So the the weld machine, the controllers, the actual robot arms, everything is made in like this single source. So okay. you're not because a lot of people have Yaskawa um, robots, and mm-hmm. so you have that as the robot. Then you'll have like a Miller or a Lincoln Put it together, yeah. And so then you have two different companies. And so if something happens, like, well, who do I call? And so I, as soon as I realized that OTC existed, that's who I went Sounds with. Sounds like a John Deere with a Yanmar motor in it. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, it's, that's who it's coming from, but it's coming through a company called Capital Robotics. And okay. so they specialize in solutions for, for people like me. And basically all the components go to them and they're building the cell that holds everything. So basically I have a, I'll be able to pick the whole thing up with a forklift and move it wherever. So whenever it gets delivered, all I got to do is plug it in and it's, and it's good to go. Okay. Whereas like a lot of people will buy the setup and you have to basically set everything on the floor, bolt it into the Piece floor. It together. And so you can't move anything at that point. Yeah. 
And I know as much as my mind changes, like You're gonna want to I may change the layout of yeah. my shop or maybe get a, a bigger shop later on. Mm-hmm. So I spent the extra money to have that. So that plan on having a bigger shop. Yeah, I mean, I definitely will. Yeah, plan on having a bigger shop. It's yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna add take, on to the back know, take, of this. Think about the growth you've had in the last two years. Think about where you're gonna be in ten years. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of paying for it all right mm-hmm. now. When you're my age, I mean, this place could be. You know, hundred thousand square well, you're feet. You're not that much older than me. I'm 48. Okay. I thought I thought you said you graduated in 2000. I graduated that's college. College in 2000. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you got yeah 11 years on me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're right. Well, old white beard, man. From 2020 was, to now, yeah, you're just getting mine, that. Mine was pretty bur- much just yeah. straight color mm-hmm. in 2020. Because I looked at the, the the announcement pictures of whenever we were having our first boy, yeah. my, my I had the long beard and it's all one color, and now it's it'll uh, be all white in about five years. You just yeah, which I don't mind. I, I kind of like Santa it. Claus. Yeah, I, I wish it would all just go gray now. Yeah, get a that's kind of what I was like when it was brown, black, white. I was like, Ugh. and then when it all went all white, I'm like, okay, I'm cool with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, I guess we can wrap it up if yeah, you got any, enjoy anything it. else you want to talk about. Want to do it again? Man, I, again, I greatly appreciate. It. I'm glad yeah. you hopped on the uh, hopped on the Facebook Absolutely. and said that you wanted to come in. It's been a pleasure to awesome. talk to you, and uh, good to finally put a face to your yeah. name. I hear your name all the time because mm-hmm. y'all are y'all are so busy with us. We'll keep it up. And if there's anything we can do for you, or if you got any more ideas, just let me know. I will. I'll bother JC. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll give you my email. You okay. <laughs> all right. Well, cool. Well, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you, guys, and. Give us some suggestions if you got any, and uh, if there's any other dealers out there that see this that want to come in like Benji did, let us know. We'll bring you in. Am I looking at that one or that one? Awesome. Thank you.